Hey guys, JH, welcome to practice tea. It's going to be a very interesting practice tea today, guys. What I have in my hand here is the same specification golf club that Bryson DeCambo plays today. We made it up over the weekend. This is a 5-iron. And it's uh, 72 degrees lie, guys. And 37 and a half inches long, which is the same as DeCambo's. The reason I wanted to hit this golf club today is because I believe that with the channel lock swing, the more upright we can have a golf club, the more we can get here and straight line it. When we're out here, we get too much arc in the golf swing. But when we're on top of it, it I mean, I haven't hit any shots with it yet. So you're going to see it in the flesh. Um, when I say we made it up, I mean, I had nothing to do with it. But my, my, my dear friend and, and I think Australia's best club maker, and I think probably the world's best club maker, my buddy from Queensland, Chris McCourt, uh, he made it up for me. And it's a Bridgestone uh, J33 head, forged head, and it's bent 72 degrees, guys. It's a five iron. Well, it's actually a four iron head, because that's the only one we had that was soft enough. But we bent it to um, to five iron loft. It's 72 degrees upright, guys. And when I first got it, I, and I put it here as a convention, I thought, oh, you couldn't swing with it. There. Although DeCambo does because he has his hand here. And that's how he can swing like he does. Because if you have your hand like that with that amount of bow in it, the toe is way into the ground and you can't swing it normally. But it's. Um, I don't know guys, I don't know how it's going to go. <laughs> You're going to see it live and it might go, it might go along the ground. Who knows what it's going to do. And I haven't had a swing today and I wanted to come down, it's late. Just wanted to hit this way so we could see a bit of ball flight. And I'll talk about a few other things in the golf swing. But guys, it feels fantastic. It's very stiff sharp because it's been cut down. and. Uh, from a four iron length to a seven iron length, so it's really stiff. And of course, it hasn't got the technicalities that DeCambo's clubs got, or the Cobra one length club. So it's it, you know it's a Frankenstein. It's not really a you know a golf club that's it's really designed to work in terms of its uh, frequencies and balance points and all that. But we'll just hit it and see what happens. This is in the raw, guys. This is JH experimental with the Frankenstein, 72 degree uh, five iron. Well, it's a four iron bent to five iron, but seven iron length. And we had to, because when we cut it down, we had to, well, I'll just show you this. Look, we had to put all this, all this uh, lead on it. Here, look at all the lead we had to put on. We had to do that to get the swing weight up because, you know, it just ended up in the, uh, in the seas <laughs> because we took so much off the length of it. So this will be interesting. I have no idea what it'll feel like. And these are blades. These are a set of cavity, like two of blades. Um, so it'll be very interesting. And I don't play blades. So this is going to be... This could go along the ground. So here we go. Boy, I'm stiff. Well, that's interesting. That's the first hit with it. And because I'm used to playing my golf clubs, which have got only 55 gram graphites in them, and the clubs are very, very light, this club has come down really, for some reason or other, maybe where we got the, the lead, it's just, it's just so toe fast. That just trap toed it and just, just hit it up there. So in order to hit this, I'd really have to, to hit into out way more and play it back further. Hey, back cock, Josh. Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, the ball's going to go low, guys, because this is so stiff. 
just stiff ass really stiff Oh, give me a set. Give me a set of these. Give me a set of 72 degree lie golf clubs. Impact is dead center. Give me a set of 72 degree 7 iron, 37 and a half inch length golf clubs. In my, in a nice lightweight set of graphites with some modern heads. I mean, that's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. These old Bridgestone forged blades with the steel shaft, they just, you know, just, just like the old days. Clubs so much heavier than my, my golf clubs. Guys, I'm only swinging, you know, pretty soft because I'm um, I'm really stiff. Been in the gym for two hours. All right, warmed up after three. I'll give this a bit of a hit. How about that for flight, guys? Well, not only have we been playing with the wrong ball position since time of memorial, we've been playing with golf clubs that are too flat. How do you pick up a golf club that is 10 degrees, 72 degrees, I think those Cobra one length are 61.5, and these are 72, so it's just off the scale. I don't know guys, I, <laughs> you can't do a bit in that. You can't do it straight in that. That's just off. What are we doing? What are we doing? What have we been fed for so long? And I know why D. Cambo is very, very um, not forthcoming about his golf clubs. In terms of the lie, I saw that clinic he did and somebody asked him and he said, oh, they're just very upright. And when the guy pushed the issue, he said, oh, they're 72 degrees. But then he didn't want to talk about it. I know why. I know why. Because he doesn't want to alert other pros to uh, to how good these golf clubs are, uh, how good 70, well okay you'd have to swing like this or like D. Cambo swings, might be a bit close to the camera here, I'll hit it up the right a little bit, Okay, the club's way heavier than mine. It hasn't got the zip that my club's got. But generally speaking, the spec, this spec in my golf clubs would be devastating. Absolutely devastating. Hit it up to the right a bit. Give you a look at it. How about that guys? Look at that for ball flight. I mean that is just Exocet laser missile. Now that went a long way. I've got used to these golf clubs. <clears throat> As Mo Norman would say, 
took me a while to get used to those like five shots I hit some out this way you might see it better how straight it how straight is straight? That's gun barrel. It's gun barrel. Now what is this is clearly done immediately. It's just alienated me from my own golf clubs. Because when I go back to 61 degree lie, it's going to feel horrible. And of course the club will be, the, the, the club will be so much further away from from where I normally am. Good thing about these blades guys with this long cow grass over here cuts through the grass great. They said they were going to mow all this this morning. I reckon it's grown an inch since yesterday. Or right, I'll hit this, I'll give this a twist. Okay here we go. Here, out here. I'm much closer than I can get here. I hope you can see the ball flight. I really hope you can see the ball flight. This time of the day, you really should be able to see the ball flight. Hit it out to the right there a little bit. Over here, back cock it. Fantastic. Well, the club's re club is really heavy, amazingly heavy compared to my golf clubs. And it's physically what we've done by putting all that that lead on it. We've made the head very heavy. We've gone for swing weight, but we've now made the head super heavy. And, and I can feel it. It just feels like an anvil. I've no idea what Decambo's golf clubs uh, are in terms of swing weight. Well, I'll hit this hard. Come on, Joe, it's warmed up half a dozen shots. Okay, let, let's 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 get it going. Look at that, guys! Look at that! Wow! As I used to say, double wow. I mean, that's just crazy. Look, I haven't hit this club before. You saw it. And he, <laughs> and he got uh, delivered this morning. It's just amazing. Amazing. Watch this. Hit it out to the right a bit. Well, guys, I've never, ever, ever, ever hit the ball straight as that. I mean, I've been hitting it straight with channel lock, but I mean, that's got no movement on those couple of shots. They're none. And they're right in the middle of the blade. And this is an old, like 10-year-old Bridgestone blade. Big, heavy shaft in it. And I, I, that head now is oh, so much lead on it. Looks like it's got, looks like it's got 30 layers of, of lead on it. So it's very heavy. What's happening here, guys, is being a heavy head, you've got to swing it rhythmically. Okay, that's the club. That's a new spec. All right, let's talk about channel lock. Guys, if that's a golf club, a golf ball, that's the target line. That's the target line there. If I set up on that there, if I had the ball way back here, and then I cocked my shoulders and I wanted to come in 
if I wanted to come into impact with closed shoulders, they would be too closed. I'd hit the ball over there. That's the reality. So what we have to do is we have to do this compensatory turnabout. And for me, I don't even know what it is. I haven't measured it. So don't get tied up and bound up with actual numbers because they don't mean anything. Just work out a number for you so you can hit the ball to the target. So if I, if I get away over him, whatever it is, if I go from here, I turn, I move away here. That's the foot line. That's probably 55 degrees. At least 50. So there it is. There's that angle there. But that's a foot line, but at the moment it's my shoulder line. So, I know I can't hit it from there. So I have to get my shoulders back on that, that line there. So how do I do that? I've got to back cock them to there. Now when they're back cocked, they're in line with that. Or a little bit to the right of it, which is great. That gives me that little bit of closed down... Um, configuration which is what I want now watch my shoulders guys watch the shoulders don't worry about the feet the foot will come up but the, and the foot's only coming up for balance but the shoulders are not changing now as I attack the ball now the club yeah the ball now clubs coming this way it's coming this way look at my shoulder it's coming that way it feels like it's going that way and that's the feeling you want to cultivate you want to cultivate that feeling feels like that but it's not that severe because you'd hit the ball over there but because because the ball is beside the body and this is what everybody keeps keeps it's difficult the feeling guys is we're hitting it here beside our body as opposed to in front of our body the emphasis is always out here it's always outside the trail foot Maybe that's better terminology. You've got to feel like the club's always swinging outside the trail foot. That's what you've got to feel. So we get square. We turn. We step away. We bring this up for balance. But look where my shoulders are. There. If that's my target line there, I'm going to be hitting just cross that target line out now depending on where you're aimed relative to your target if the club face is square going across that line on a tangent it will push the ball now you can just push the ball straight to the target but if you don't want to do that um, by aiming a little bit further left you can just shut the face down a little bit and you can just push draw it I don't know what my face configuration is but it basically only hits a tiny little draw dead straight. Now I don't know what the numbers are, but I can feel them. I can feel what the numbers are. I don't want to think about numbers. I don't want to think about 45.5 or 26.8 or whatever. I just want to, I want to think about a feel that I've got. That's all I want to think about. More to the point, that's all I want to feel. I want to, don't want to think about anything else. I just want to feel that. So guys, I don't know, other than having a camera up there or having something diagrammatically put together, uh, and I've got a friend that might be able to do that for me, he's a graphic designer, I might be able to get him to do that and show something down here. But it's going to vary, guys. The main thing is you've got to get in a position, a position, where the ball is outside your body. It's over here. It's outside your back foot there there it is it's outside our body here in line with the shoulders that are pointing that way I promise you the light will go on it's very difficult now but when it goes on you'll and the simplicity of it once you do that and you work those angles out and how to apply those angles in a complete protocol a sequence protocol the thing becomes foolproof and the swing becomes or well, the ball flight um, starting um, direction becomes infallible it has to start in that direction 
because the shoulders are dictating the clubs going in that direction. Can't go anywhere else. Guys, it's not that it's not that impossible to to grasp. It's just geometry. And it's corralling this golf club. If I can corral this golf club here, look, if I did this guys, look, watch this. If I just stood here like that, here, and just swung the golf, the golf ball like that as a feeling, okay, I can see maybe what some people are thinking. When I do that, I'm here, and the ball is there, turned around. The club is starting outside the body and it's ending up technically in front of the body but in front of the rear of the body the, the rearmost extremity of the body because it's opposite the the uh, the foot if it was behind the trail foot it would be outside of the body on that side but technically if it's in line with the foot then it is in front of the body marginally marginally but it's but the attack of the golf club never comes in front of the body. Conventional golf swing, there, the club will come from wherever over here, but it'll always come in front of the body here. This golf club never comes in front of the body at impact, or past the center of the body, never. Because it's there, guys. It's there. This club can never get past the center of the body. Can never get to over here. Now I don't know, uh, I don't know what, I'm going to come up with better explanation, you've got to see something from here, you've got to see something from here, maybe I get my cameraman hook him up to a drone and just elevate him up here, guys we're not a production house, we're a little, this is my practice fairway and this is my practice sessions and my development sessions. That's all they are. We're not trying to win the best uh, film graphics award, but I can understand why a lot of people are having difficulty coming to grips with, uh, with the geometry. I've got to tell you guys, after having this in my hand and keep putting it down here, it becomes so natural, 72 degrees. It's not natural there, it feels horrible there. Now, I mean, I don't know how Decambo plays from there. If Decambo played from here, you're talking about an ultimate machine. Because he hits it straight, but he can still hit it left. And he can still hit it left, even with his on plane swing. He can still hit it left. But he doesn't very much, but he still has potential to do that. There's no potential to do that with this golf swing, with this club, with this golf club. I can't believe how good this feels now. Just feels like I just want to straight line it to the ball every time. I'll just um, I just hit one across the camera. This club is so heavy compared to mine. Wow. Back cock the shoulders. Now when I back cock guys, I'm probably you know, 10 degrees closed, that's all. Grass is so long. Get on it, JH. Get away, open it up. Back cock it. <laughs> that is so perfect. Perfect. And this is a Frankenstein. It's not even designed to work like this, but it works great. Absolute Frankenstein. 
So if you could have a set actually made to the same specification as decambos, which I'll end up getting, you can rest assured. I'll just get a forged set of uh, the one length and we'll bend them. They'll be the same as this. Anyway, guys, that's just a little bit of uh, technical uh, development and innovation. Well, I didn't innovate it, but uh, um, I've copied it. But it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you know what? If you had a golf club like this, 72 degrees, imagine how good it would be for chipping. Look at this. <laughs> oh, it's just like a putter. Most putters are 71 degrees. This is a putter lie. It's a putter lie. Look at this for chipping. Look. Just get here. Look. It's just gone straight under the camera. And does that feel good? Does that feel good? As a matter of fact, when Chris McCourt made this, he said to me, if you do nothing else with a JH, just put in your bag as a chip around the green. It'll be unbelievable. And I'm gonna, I'll do a video with it. Maybe tomorrow. It's fantastic. Okay, guys, just have a look at that. Just a little bit of innovation today. But we didn't hit any bad shots. Did that first one, just because the, the toe just went over a little bit, just hit a hard slinger. But um, the rest of them were perfect. Okay, guys, there's a lot to come with this golf swing. And there's a lot to happen with it. With, um, with with club specifications and I'm going to get a driver now we'll get a long old hosel long hosel driver and I'll get my buddy to bend it up uh, some of those old tailors with the long hosels the old burners uh, super burner or the burner pluses and bend it up and I'll bend like today today's drivers are really upright they're like 60 60 degrees Hogan's driver was 40 48 I've got it in the car 48 degrees so that's 12 degrees under a standard driver so if I can get a driver knocked up to you know, you know 55 degrees or something oh, we'll knock it through your front door at 250 yards okay guys have a look at that and uh, there'll be more to come on this this breakthrough with the specification